That's a big, big one. Big, big one. Great big one. <laughs> Today's video, as you can see, I'm going to be going over my traditional setup that I'll be hunting with all season. Um, as of my compound, I went ahead and got rid of it. I don't plan on picking another one up for a long time. So, I'll be shooting traditional, like I say, for the next couple years. So, starting off, first thing is, if y'all has never shot traditional or tried traditional bow hunting, maybe you shot traditional equipment, just never took it out bow hunting, just give it one try, man. Take it out there and hunt with it. Once you all do harvest a deer with one of these, um, the feeling is insane. It, it's, you know, it's just as if every deer you shoot as it be the same as you shooting like a 200 inch white tail. You know, it, it's crazy. That's why I'm over here, uh, 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 you know, can't even talk, but yeah. It's it's every time you shoot one, one of these, it's like a 200 inch deer you done shot. But I was shooting four inch turkey feathers. They had four fletchings on them. And uh, throughout the years, I've shot squirrels with them. I killed those two deer last year with them and all that. But from me shooting the squirrels and stuff like that, I tore them all up. So I said, well, I'll go buy a new dozen of arrows. So I ended up going and buying these. These are also 400 spine, but these are three fletch. And they're, I think, four inches. And they're you know artificial turkey feathers um, it says here you know 400 spine it's hard, probably hard to tell first three years I was bow hunting I was shooting muzzy broadheads 100 grain and then last year I switched to G5 just because I could get them to fly a lot straighter than I could a muzzy so I start shooting them I shot both of them deer with them but I didn't get a pass through on that doe or the buck which I understand the buck, he was a far shot. He was 30 some yards when I shot him, so I didn't expect it. But the doe, I kind of expected it. She was only like 16 yards. So what I decided to do was, is go buy 300 spine arrows. So I bought a dozen of them. Brought them out here, I started shooting down range with them. And these things was just going all over the place. I could not hit consistently with them. So I went back to these right here, started shooting again. I got that group that I was looking for and I decided, well, you know what? These are 400 spines, so why don't I just up the grain of the broadhead head on the end? And that should help get a, a pass through. So that's what I did. These are basically, I can't remember the exact name of them. I ordered them a long time ago, but these are pretty much a single bevel broadhead. head. I know they make multiple single bevels out there, but this is just like it. It's just a knockoff brand of them. But these things are still razor sharp. I uh, took them out of the pack the day I got them and kind of shook the pack to see how many was in it. And all of them come straight through that little plastic pack into the floor. I'm tipped with a 150 grain brought head on a 400 spine arrow. These arrows are cut to 31 inches, my draw length. And another thing when it comes to the bow that I switched up is a quiver. I never used to shoot with a quiver. Y'all remember, I used to have a quiver that sat in my backpack. That's how I carried my arrows. This year, I went ahead and bought one of these quivers that attaches to the bow. And uh, obviously, I'm telling you, I'll never go back to shooting bare limb bow. I want this thing on my bow at all times. Not only that, it just looks super cool being on the recurve. But y'all can see, there's a, it has an Indian on it. And then this, and it has like a little Allen wrenches and stuff. And, you can slide it wherever you want it. I kind of 
keep mine as close to the, you know the rest as I can. And then for the rest, I used to have duct tape, camouflage duct tape, and I ran it on there since I got the bow four or five years ago. And uh, I shot all the deer and stuff with it with just tape on it. But this year, just to help silence it, I went to some felt. I've got a weed little thing here and a felt right here. Just to keep the arrow a little quiet as it's coming off the bow, and it did silence in a little bit. String, the only thing I did different this year with my string was I put a knock point. I used to run threading, but over time that thing gets warped out and falls, and then if it, you know what I mean, you got to redo it and then reburn another piece and redo your riser. So I just saved myself a headache, I did this, but as of the silencers, me and my cousin put these in a long time ago. These are squirrel tails. And uh, pretty much I think a year after we got the bow, we put them in. They've been in since and they ain't going nowhere. I don't plan on putting anything else on them. I was going to put something on the limbs to help silence my limbs too when I shoot, but I'm just going to leave them bare limb too. Um, I just want it to be as traditional as possible and also anyone wondering this is a ben pearson cougar 7050 they probably don't even make this bow anymore i'm sure you can try to look it up online i don't think you'd find it at 28 inch draw this thing is 62 pounds i'm pulling 31 inches draw length so i'm shooting probably roughly 67 pound draw 65 67 somewhere in there but yeah that's my setup going into this year like i say it's a 400 spine arrow tip with 125 grain. We'll go ahead and just call it single bubble broadhead. Not quite, but just like them. And hopefully here Saturday morning, I can lay some meat on the ground. But as y'all can see right here, I got a target up at 20 yards. I got a little thing full of arrows. I'm gonna put y'all on there. We're gonna sling them down. I know this ain't the longest video, but like I say, I just hope to get some people out there shooting traditional archery this year and taking theirs out. And, trying to get them a deer because like I said this it's the best thing you'd ever accomplish I don't care if you wanted to get a damn house or something and you finally got it and you just feel so ain't no feeling like when you you know get an old stick and string no sights no nothing go out there and harvest a deer ain't, ain't a feeling that can come close to it I don't give a shit <laughs> another thing I almost missed that's super important obviously I'm not shooting bare finger I was shooting a shooter's glove with three fingers I lost it this year. It just so happened that I ordered one of these right here. This is a tab. And uh, I still had it laying around. I had never used it before. So I said, you know what? I'm going to go use it. I'm still learning it. But I'm telling you right now, I'd highly recommend getting one of these things. Uh, they make many of them. I just picked up a little uh, knockoff brand. I don't have the pack with me to see the name of it. But uh, here's a little image of it. If y'all want to go on Amazon and find it. It's got a little R on it, stuff like that. I shoot three fingers under with my recurve. So this, I do the same way. It's supposed to, there's a little notch in between that glove. It's supposed to slide right in between your knock and your string. And then you'd be split fingering it. I personally can't shoot split finger. Tried it and tried it, I can't shoot consistent. So I use three underneath, draw, let her fly. Yeah, I almost forgot that part. So yeah, I am using a tab all season. And then look at my little band-aid. The brought head tried to cut my finger clean in half. I had to go to the ER. I stayed in there for probably 16 days or so. Just couldn't believe it. You know, I thought I was gonna lose my finger. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> no, the broadheads, as I was saying, was scary sharp. As I was pushing them up in there, I was trying to set this little thing and nick my finger a little bit, but hey, I'll live. That's the only band-aid I have. So we used it, you know what I mean? Back. Back. That was me. Didn't have my glove all the way on. Hit my arm. Still okay though. That deer. That's a pretty good group. That's a pretty good group. I just gotta get used to this little tab thingy, McBob. But that's anyway, that's my uh, 2023 bow set up. Like I say, it's gonna be heading into the woods Saturday. I'm gonna be trying to put one down with it. But hopefully y'all enjoyed the video out there. If y'all did, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. If you haven't already, subscribe. And also, if y'all have any like 
questions about recommendations on bows and stuff, drop them down in the comment section and uh, I'll be sure to get back with y'all and let y'all know what's good bows and what kind of good arrows and stuff like that you need. I ain't no expert by any means about this stuff. I usually just buy my arrows straight off Amazon. They shoot good. Take them out hunting. So this has been Hunt Fish Fish Ohio Outdoors. I'm your host Trey and we'll see y'all on another episode of uh, Deer Hunting Blues. <laughs> I got him.